I'm not so sure that uh, so much has actually changed. Uh, 48 hours, I think uh, our students can match that. And if I look, they're gone now, if I look at the, at the pictures, they're in black and white 50 years ago, but otherwise, I'm not so sure that Thomas has changed. On the 3rd of December, 1964, at two o'clock in the morning, the doorbell rang and it delivered uh, a uh, bewildered postman, delivered a telegram from the foreign ministry marked Etat Priorité, informing me that on the basis of the exam taken a few days before, my admission to the Diplomatic Academy of Vienna is being granted. These telegrams at the time, which have been marked Etat Priorité, had to be delivered day and night, unimaginable today, of course. The exam itself was a bit nerve-wracking uh, for all of us. A panel of no less than seven high-ranking distinguished gentlemen, amongst them the, late federal, the later federal president Kirchleger, under the chairmanship of Bruno Kreisky himself, drilled the candidates. Kreisky noticed my apparent nervousness and said in his usual calm voice, Dr. Cristiani, we do not have the intention to examine you in a manner for you to fail, but we rather wish you to pass. So there is no reason to be nervous. Ladies and gentlemen, from that very day on, a completely new and exciting chapter has opened for me, and certainly for all my colleagues who have been honored a minute ago. It has profoundly influenced our later lives and future careers. For most of us to study at the Diplomatic Academy was only possible by a generous bursary provided at the time by public and private institutions. On the 11th of January, 1965, the first course in the newly established Diplomatic Academy of Vienna started under the directorship of Ernst Florian Winter, a political science professor having returned from the United States a few years before. All in all, and it has been said already before, a most remarkable man. He sadly passed away a few months ago, and I wish to take this special opportunity of today to be, pay highest tribute to him. An enormously enthusiastic and inspiring teacher and headmaster, a person totally selfless and kind. At this occasion, it's also with great regret that I have to announce that uh, two of the colleagues of the first diploma course have also passed away a very long time ago. It was Volker Wolf and Winfried Lang. However, from the very first moment on, Ernst Florian Winter kept us all on our toes almost 24 hours a day. I should mention that at times 48 hours, would you believe it, 48 hours per week of instructions in the various fields, including languages, brought most of us to the limit. Exams were conducted on an American-based tough but objective point system hitherto unknown in Austria. New and exciting subjects were introduced into the curriculum and presented by eminent international scholars. And for the first time in our lives as students, we were actively encouraged to challenge opinions wherever they emanated from a system almost totally alien from our university experiences. 
Life in the academy was competitive and more than once the director was overheard in saying, those who are not able to live up to the high standards I have set are free to leave any time. Despite the pressure to perform, all the students, we were 23 in total, including five foreigners, felt enormous pride, but also joy from the very first moment for having been chosen as pioneers inside a new postgraduate institution in Austria. No longer did we have to look with envy to Bologna or Brügge for this kind of high quality international training. The curriculum was greatly enriched by the fact that Ernst Florian also brought in personalities of the highest magnitude who were not academic teachers, but men and women of practice in their various fields. We were able to closely interact with them, which gave us invaluable insights into the intricacies of international politics. Living together in the academy was comfortable and rewarding. We were very well looked after by the administrative head, Mrs. Inge Turek, and social activities, including excursions to various places, were organized. This quickly emanated in closeness and friendship amongst all of us. When we left the academy in summer 1966, having passed the final exams and having written our paper, we felt well prepared for our future lives being inside the Austrian Foreign Service or in various other professions of international dimension. All in all, we owe a great debt of gratitude to the then Foreign Minister of Austria, Mr. Bruno Kreisky. Without his keen personal interest and effort, the Diplomatic Academy of Vienna would not have come into existence. Finally, on behalf of my friends and former colleagues of first vintage, so to speak, present here today, I wish to express our gratitude to the director of the Academy, Ambassador Hans Winkler, for awarding us these medals of honor. They mean a lot to us and shall keep alive the memories of a most cherished chapter in our lives. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Winkler, Excellencies, distinguished guests, professor, and students. I'm deeply honored to be here on this very special day, speaking on behalf of all the students of the Diplomatic Academy. So far, we have heard why this day is very special for the Diplomatic Academy as an institution. But what I would like to tell you is three more reasons why this is also a turning point for us, the students. First of all, you might have not heard about the fact that we have a new Jubilee this year. Uh, exactly 10 years ago, a group of students founded DASI, the Diplomatic Academy Student Initiatives, of which I am president this year. DASI is a student organization that coordinates and organizes cultural and social events, as well as functioning as a bridge between the students, the professors, and the administrations. The way I personally like to think about DASI is as the glue that keeps all the students of the DA together. The second reason why this is a turning point is the fact that the students of the DA in June made DA history by voting in the first ever female DASI president. It took us only 10 years, but here I am, leading and representing the students. The fact that I'm here to give this speech, I think, is highly symbolic of the change that we are witnessing in the world as well as at the academy. Thirdly, let me tell you how proud I am to be leading a group of students that have proved throughout the years to be extremely active in very diverse contexts. As we have heard previously, 
Students have been extremely engaged uh, on the international settings as well as in the Viennese setting. And this year is again special because under the guidance of DASI, we have the largest number of committees and societies, namely 13. So the students of the academy study about 25 hours a day, I would say. So what do we do in that extra hour, you might be wondering. Um, we like to organize cultural and social events. We want to have an impact in the city we are living in and in the world that we approach. So just to give you a few examples, this year we will continue with the long tradition of the DA ball, which will happen this year during the Viennese ball season. And the theme will be the Congress of Vienna. We have heard about it already, so it seems like a lot of jubilees are coming back again. Furthermore, the students themselves are enriching the great curricula that we are offered by the DA by organizing a conference. I like to stress out that this conference will take place in March and it's completely organized by the students and it is completely for the students and for external guests. Both of these events, the ball and the uh, conference, um, also have an important scope which is to raise money for a charity that is elected by the students and that is actively supported throughout the whole year. Also, we may talk about ourselves in some uh, local newspapers. Uh, for the panel talks that were organized by Etia Talks last year, uh, tackling environmental issues. Finally, but no less important, every term the students produce a great a magazine called Polemics, uh, which deals with current international issues and that has also received a great success outside of the DA. So as you can see, there is a lot going on, apart from learning all about diplomacy, economics, history, and international relations. And we do reach out to the future as well. If all of this has not convinced you yet about the distinctiveness of the students that I am here to represent, let me tell you something more. Uh, through the Wine Society, the DA has won the Port Roger Wine Tasting Competition against all of the other Viennese universities for two years running. So, <laughs> because we are learning a lot about diplomacy, we know that a glass of wine can change history. And we also want to influence history, so please find us at the reception later. We know our wines. <laughs>